Y'all know my channel is full of simple, non-controversial topics, so I figured, hey, I should totally make a video about, um, abortion. Ah, man, where do I even start? Houston, we have a problem. The majority of Americans believe in the legal right to an abortion, particularly before 28 weeks of pregnancy. And since 1973, that's been the law, thanks to a Supreme Court case called Roe v. Wade. You've probably heard of it. Fast forward to 2016, and Roe v. Wade is being effectively overturned. I don't wanna make anyone panic, but actually everyone should panic. In many parts of the US, abortion has been made so difficult to obtain that it's effectively the same as if it were illegal. I know what you're thinking, how does that happen? Aren't our rights protected? No, as it turns out. Our troubles began in 1992. While three-year-old me was hoarding Fruit Loops in my onesies, the Supreme Court ruled that states could pass restrictions on abortion, but those restrictions couldn't present an undue burden to obtaining one. Now the question is, what counts as an undue burden? What does that even mean? States were given a lot of leeway for their own interpretations and went on to pass nearly 1,000 restrictions on abortion. Here's the state of abortion in the US right now as of today. 25 states have mandatory medically unnecessary ultrasounds. Three of those states require you to look at the image while the doctor describes it in detail. 33 states have mandatory waiting periods. 20 states have banned that could outlaw abortion as early as 12 weeks, 13 states have near total bans on abortion. 11 states are funding crisis pregnancy centers, which set up shop next to real health clinics and deliberately mislead and lie to people about abortion. 34 states have barred financial assistance for the poor and federal funding's completely banned under the Hyde Amendment. 44 states have laws regulating irrelevant things like the width of clinic hallways. What this means is that abortion clinics in the US are being closed faster than you can say, get out of my vagina. 87% of counties in the US now have no abortion clinic. In five states, there's only one clinic. As many as 240,000 women in Texas have already attempted to end a pregnancy on our own. Do we just travel back in time like a hundred years? Back when 5,000 women died every year as a direct result of abortion being illegal? Back in the days of coat hangers, back alley abortions, and black market drugs? That's where we're headed. And for some areas, that's where we are. Don't worry though, the story gets way worse. Two months ago, a self-described warrior for babies opened fire at a Planned Parenthood in Colorado, killing three people. To which some responded like this. What makes this extreme mentality terrifying is that if a person is ignorant enough to think that a grown human being and a blastocyst have the same sentience and thusly the same rights, that person just might not see a moral problem with killing the grown human being. They call themselves pro-life, however, they are anything but that. If they cared about life, certainly they'd care about female death certainly they wouldn't use violence. And yet, since 1977, nearly 7,000 acts of violence have been reported at abortion clinics. 182 arson attacks, 42 bombings, 17 attempted murders, eight completed murders. Anti-choicers are also not trying to end abortion. Policies known to reduce the abortion rate. Sex education, condom access, birth control access, emergency contraception access. Yet these politicians have fought to block literally all of those policies, instead offering us abstinence-only education known to increase the number of unintended pregnancies. Now I am not good at math y'all, but something here does not add up. This movement doesn't give a shit about life, about babies, definitely not about women, so what's really going on here? The real motive of the self-described pro-life movement is a politicized attack on sex, and more specifically on female sexuality. The underlying belief is that sex is only for procreation. It's a woman's duty to have babies. A woman who has sex for pleasure and not for babies has broken the rules. She's sinned, and now she has to face the consequences of her actions. Consequences being pregnancy and childbirth. The irony is that nearly three quarters of women who have an abortion are already mothers and can't afford another child. So let's contrast this with the reproductive justice movement, otherwise known as pro-choice. The underlying belief of pro-choice is that people have a right to control their own body and their reproduction. The right to life does not mean that fetuses or anybody else has a right to survive off of your body 
against your will. Philosophically, the right to our own body is so imperative, you know, it's just so central to our understanding of ourselves that people will take drastic measures, including putting their health and their lives on the line in order to preserve their autonomy, even when governments try to take it away. This has been the case all throughout history. And this is why the reproductive justice movement asserts that not only should abortion be legal, but it also needs to be safe and accessible. This reduces the overall harm to individuals and to society. Now look, the pro-choice movement can't compete with doctored photos, crocodile tears, but it's important to understand that this is just propaganda, and it's propaganda that's made effective by the fact that a lot of people are scientifically illiterate and they're easily manipulated emotionally. The only conclusion that a halfway reasonable person can draw about the pro-life movement is that they're seeking state control over primarily women's bodies and lives in ways that are medically unnecessary, patronizing, and invasive. This is a deliberate attack on women, and by extension, it's an attack on anyone who can get pregnant. It is a deliberate attack on women who are poor, who are disproportionately women of color. Without reproductive choice, gender equality cannot and will not be achieved, and that is exactly their point. This is where we come in, Sex Plus fam. This year, 469 seats are up for grabs in the election. 460, that's a lot. Crucially, most of these seats belong to the politicians who have been passing all these restrictions. Obviously, electing a good president is imperative, not just because of their leadership and veto power, but also because as many as four Supreme Court justices may need appointed during this president's term. But the Senate has to approve the president's appointments. Selection is not just about the president. The Senate and the House of Representatives are just as important. Just, just as important. This is our chance to get the vote out at all levels of government, because that is where this is happening. That should be the number one priority this year. The number two priority is to support those who have been fighting in and out every day on the front lines trying to maintain our rights. I'm gonna put a bunch of links below. Please check them out. Please support them in any way you can. I'm sure you have plenty of thoughts and flame wars to start, so don't waste any time. Get to it down below. If you wanna keep in touch during election year, subscribe for more videos. Yes, I did just say please subscribe. I am the YouTube devil. I'll go sit in time out now. I love y'all, be well, and I'll see you next week with more Sex Plus. Mwah. Except your mom, oh. What?